Now we're in chapter 4, and we look at this problem, and it says the force F acts perpendicular to the inclined plane. Determine the moment produced by F about the point A. There's point A. And express the result as a Cartesian vector. If you could get the vector force F is something I, something J, something K, then if you were then needing to calculate the moment that that force induces about the point A, sometimes the book uses that notation. I like to just put it like this. Anyway, as a vector entity, that I think you know how to do if you could get that force as a Cartesian vector. But the challenge is getting that force as a Cartesian vector. But if you did get that force as a Cartesian vector, wouldn't it just be R cross F? Yeah. So this would be from A to C. So what happens if somebody, and I know it's going to be hard grading exams, right? Because that's what happens. Somebody says, oh, my R is C to A. Because isn't that the negative of, so it'll be a sign error. Okay, but let's, let's do this. Okay, so let me finish this out. What is R A to C? Well, you would get the location of every point A, B, and C, so it's less error prone. Clearly get those points. And then uh, you would be able to go that R A to C is, in the interest of time, what is it going to be? Zero in the I plus 4 in the J, minus 3 in the K, units of meter. Did I do that okay? Okay, now that wasn't the hard part. The F, the F is the hard part, isn't it? But you were on to something. You're saying, look it, it's perpendicular to the plane. And that plane is represented by two lines, so it's perpendicular. They're giving you to the line BC as well as AC or or CB and CA. If I could find, I'll take the magnitude of F, the 400 Newton, if I could find the unit vector perpendicular to the plane, I'd have it, wouldn't I? So really, I'm, in, I'm interested in finding a unit vector that's perpendicular. So what is the feature of cross product? If I get two vectors, uh, let's say a vector A and I cross it with vector B, it's equal to the magnitude of A, magnitude of B, and then sine or cosine, which one is it of the angle in between the two vectors? Sine of the angle in between? Okay. This is magnitude, but it, the direction is perpendicular to both A and B. It's, it's out of the plane, perpendicular to the plane represented by the two vectors A and B. We need to review that section, I think. Some people are looking at me like, ah, oh, what are you talking about? Uh, the mathematical cross product. So, to get this unit vector, I would get R, and you can go C to A, that'd be fine, and then cross it with R, C to B, that's good. Or if you do A to B, look at your hand, use your right hand, A, I'm sorry, C, if you're going C to A and you cross it with C to B, won't it be pointed in the correct direction? It'll be coming up and out. Versus if I switch the order and I do the, first, the C to B first and then I cross it with C to A, it'll be in the opposite direction. It'll be down, right? So... <clears throat> So R, C to A cross R, C to B. I, I divide it by the magnitude of R, uh, C to A cross R, C to B. And that is my unit vector that I want to find. All right. So I get uh, the vector R, C to A. That's just the opposite of what we had before. Isn't it zero I? minus 4 in the J plus 3 in the K. And then the R, uh, C to B, that one's probably a little easier. What do we move going at C to B? We move out positive 3. And then we move back negative 4. And we note no change in the K. Those are all units of meter, meter. And then you have to compute 
the cross product, get the magnitude of it, normalize it to get the unit vector. The unit vector comes in 12i plus 9j plus 12k divided by the square root of 369. Now that I have that unit vector, I can represent f nicely, then I can compute the moment about point A. All right, at that, I'm going to say that this is the answer. Then I'm going to try to move to another problem so we can solve another problem in the time remaining.